everyone, my name's Kristen and welcome to My Cathedral Garden. If you're new here, I'm so excited that you're here. I am a homeschooling mama to four kids. I have a fifth grader, a third grader, a first grader, and a four year old this year. And today I am talking all about my favorite fall books. So come join me. Before I get started and showing you the books, I do want to let you guys know that this video is in collaboration with my friend Christy from These Little Sprouts. Guys, if you have not discovered Christy yet, you are in for a treat. She is a mama of three who is just a breath of fresh air to me. She um, shows us so many neat ideas and different things with unit studies and ways that she is homeschooling her kiddos while also being real and showing us the hard days and um, the triumphs and the trials and all the things in between. So if you have not checked out Christy's content yet, be sure to check out all the links that are in the description below. I'm going to link her video and her channel and her Instagram. You won't be sorry. Thank you so much, Christy, for collaborating with me. And I can't wait to see what books you have. Let's get started, shall we? Before we begin, just a little bit about me is, number one, I live in Texas. And right now, it is just now beginning to feel like fall. I'm talking three days ago, it was 93. I'm in the middle of October. So, we have um, very, very, very long summers, um, a very short fall, a very short spring, and then just like a mild winter. Um, so some of these books are going to kind of reflect that and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Um, some of these books that I'm going to start off, off with are not necessarily quote unquote fall books, but they're books about the changing of the seasons or they um, walk through that throughout the entire book and I really, really like those and I pull those out now because fall really feels like to me the first kickoff of the season change. Now, I know that there are others all around, you know, the course of the year, but we start summer in about mid-April and it ends about mid-October is what it feels like temperature-wise. Um, so when it finally breaks, when that humidity is gone, that kind of signals to me personally, I guess, and my family, and maybe more Texans, I'm not sure, that seasons are changing so here are the ones that I have for the for this these are just golden books um, a child's year just kind of goes through the, the different seasons holidays old McDonald this one I just love because it's cute and fall and farm and stuff like that I love this one I believe I heard about this book from Abby from Rooted and Rest and it's called home in the woods and it talks about how a family survived the Great Depression um, with a home in the woods. And so it goes through the different seasons as they live there and what they do to make it a home and stuff like that. Um, it's very good for getting children to kind of look outside of themselves. The illustrations are gorgeous. But it goes through each season and I really like that and how they find ways to stay happy and stay together. Um, another one of these that's just a favorite, kind of timeless, but the feel of it feels like fall to me. Cozy togetherness is Rocks of Oxen. It's actually um, set, I believe, kind of in the desert. I think New Mexico. Um, but it's just a sweet about a sweet group of kids and in a specific time in childhood and this little city that they make out of rocks. It's really, really sweet. It's one of our family's favorites. Um, and then We Are the Gardeners by Joanna Gaines. Um, if you have not read this for whatever reason, it is worth having. It is worth the price that you would pay to have it. It is one of the sweetest books. And of course it goes through gardening and so you would think obviously spring for this but it just I love the um, analogy that we need all seasons and time and things to grow so just really sweet books okay let's move on into just fall books I was a former teacher and so was my mom and my mom's mother-in-law and um, 
that my, my grandmother's mom as well so my great grandmother my brother is a high school teacher like we just got it everywhere my dad's a teacher so i um kind of inherited quite a few different books and so you're gonna see a lot of scholastic books from either my time as a teacher or really from my mom and my grandma uh, but they are so good so don't um don't sleep on scholastic if there's i'm not sure if there's a way I would assume so that there would be a way for homeschoolers to order from them. Um, if not, if you have a teacher friend, ask them if you can just get in on their order because they have a lot of really inexpensive but sweet and just fun books that would just announce the season. This is the apple pie tree, the biggest apple ever. Let me see here. Oh, Johnny Appleseed. Fall is a wonderful time to begin learning about him. Here's another one by Carol, Carol Beach York. This one's a little bit older. I'm sure this came from my grandmother's classroom, but it's a chapter book. It would be like a fun little read aloud to do as a family. These obviously are picture books that go through and tell the story of Johnny Appleseed. Let me see. Oh, this one's so fun. More scholastic books, Leaves Fall Down, let it fall like doesn't that just i mean it would just be something fun to read kind of before bedtime or maybe during lunch or something like that the perfect perfect pumpkin apples apples everywhere once again scholastic and just cute pictures sweet pictures i love this one it's a little scholastic book it has no like just um merit as far as you know a classic or anything like that but it's called autumn's first leaf and it's just about this leaf and they start to change colors and they like what's going on and it's one of the first books i read when we finally switch over our season to autumn whenever i start to decorate for fall and things like that it just kind of kicks it off for us which is just a silly fun little book here's a science book about colorful leaves um it's a scholastic vocabulary vocabulary reader and it just talks about why the leaves change colors if you've got a kiddo that wants to know why to everything oh uh, this one i love this is a scholastic book and it is hilarious my kids laugh their head off at amelia bedelia books they love her this one's funny because instead of amelia bedelia being a grown woman as she is in the books that we all knew and grew up with it's um, told from the perspective of when she was a little girl which is just so cute and so sweet um, it's hilarious they're trying to get uh, apples to make apple pie and oh it's just funny as always with Amelia Bedelia and at the end of the book it's got an apple pie recipe which is fun another one that we just really love is the Berenstein Bears now I picked this up from Mardell which um, is owned by Hobby Lobby, so it might actually be in Hobby Lobby too. This is their fall collection, and it's three books in one. We love the Berenstain Bears over here. Um, sweet, precious books. I love that this is three books in one, kind of, you know, get more bang for your buck, and you can just read a few stories. Berenstain Bears are awesome. And then there's Duck and Goose, Find a Pumpkin, just a little board book for our four-year-old something for her to read and enjoy and not destroy so those are all of my books that I have just about the fall season in general the next set of books that I have for you I've broken it up kind of into three different categories that all have to do with Thanksgiving but um, just kind of in three different ways so I have just a just books about Thanksgiving fun books that have Thanksgiving as their subject. I've got some books about pilgrims and the first Thanksgiving and then I also have books about indigenous people because that kind of all ties in together. So let me pull them out. We will start with, I think we'll start with our indigenous people group books. So there's some about Sacagawea which these are just so good. Um, this one is a Caldecott award winner and it was Arrows Arrow to the Sun. It's just really, just an interesting book. It's 
The artwork is interesting. Tells a story about um, just I think like an Indian folk tale, which is cool. My kids really like this one with all the pictures and the art and just kind of highlights that culture a little bit. There's a legend of the blue bonnet. I feel like every good Texas teacher probably had this. If you don't know, the blue bonnet is the state flower of Texas. We're very proud of it apparently, but um, there is a legend behind it and this one is really sweet. There is also the legend of the Indian paintbrush and I know that this one came from my grandma's classroom because I was in her second grade class and she read it to me. Um, so I have fond memories with this. There is giving thanks a Native American good morning message. Once again, I inherited this obviously from either my grandmother or my mom because there's the reading rainbow logo that was definitely vintage now for sure. Then we also have Squanto. So I have a couple of, no, three different books on Squanto. This one is Squanto and the Miracle of Thanksgiving. And if you have not read anything about Squanto's life, oh man, you are in for a treat with these books. Um, the Lord's provision is just so evident in, um, in this book and in Squanto's life and how that kind of all worked out for him. He was a young boy that was part of an Indian tribe. He ended up being kidnapped and taken, I believe, to Spain. Let me make sure I've got my facts right and sold there as a slave but some monks ended up purchasing him because it says that god had another plan for squanto um on the dock that morning stood a group of men who were different from the others these men were called monks and they served god when it was squanto's turn to be sold one of the monks held up a small bag of heavy coins and a man from the ship snatched the coins up and shoved squanto towards the monks these monks taught him how to read and how to write. They taught him English. And then they eventually paid for his passage to go back home, um, which is just a really cool story. When he got back there, he found out all of his tribe had pretty much perished and um, ended up helping the pilgrims. Like, it's just neat how God used something that was hard and turned it around and obviously used it for good. So that's. This one is Squanto and the Miracle of Thanksgiving. This one is a four, first start biography, Young Squanto. Be just a good way to get some younger kiddos reading it about his life, get them interested. And then this one is Squanto's Journey, the story of the first Thanksgiving. The pictures in this one are absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful pictures. We brush a story. Really enjoy these. All right, let's move into um, the pilgrims now since that uh, kind of goes along with the Squanto. Um, I have these I know I got from my mom. This is NCY Pilgrims. It's text by Robert Sansauchi. It just tells about the pilgrims, about why they came here what it was like, all of that kind of good stuff. This one is called On the Mayflower, and this one's kind of neat and different because um, it photographs kids that are obviously present day, but they have gone back and put on clothes and role-played for this book to figure out what it was like and to show what life was like on the Mayflower. And it's just neat, this one is, to be able to see pictures of um, real people instead of cartoons or drawings. Obviously, pictures don't exist from that time period and so just to have something that would show what someone actually looked like is kind of cool. So I like this one on the Mayflower. This one is The First Thanksgiving by Jean. Craighead George, and it's illustrated by Thomas Locker. Locker. Gorgeous illustrations, tells the story of the first Thanksgiving. Just really pretty. This one is called Molly's Pilgrim, and I think, once again, this was just something from my grandmother or my mom's stash. Um, 
but it's really neat because it tells about uh, a pilgrim and how they were immigrants and um, the mom of the little girl in this story how she um, is a pilgrim and how what that means and stuff like that so it was kind of neat because it did correlate it back to Thanksgiving a little bit this is Margaret Margaret Pumphrey's Pilgrim Stories. This is a great read aloud in November. Um, I cannot remember where I heard to buy this one, but it tells the story. It's just a chapter book of the Pilgrims, where they started off in England and then in Holland and how they came to America. And it kind of just follows their story in a um, storybook format. Okay, we're gonna move right along now into Thanksgiving. Right. Lastly, let's move into our Thanksgiving books. I love this one. It is called In November by Cynthia Ryland. It is beautifully written and illustrated. Talks about what happens just in November. Just a really sweet, gorgeous book. Um, there, then there's this one, Happy Thanksgiving, and my little girls just like looking through this one because it's all about like what the, what crafts and things you can do to celebrate the Thanksgiving season. Um, this for sure probably came from my grandmother, you know, pre-Pinterest, pre-Teachers Pay Teachers. This is how teachers got ideas. So then we have the Berenstain Bears Thanksgiving. It is not inside of this fall collection, so this is totally different. Um, but still just as fun, obviously just as sweet Berenstain Bear stories. We have Clifford's first Thanksgiving, the turkey that saves the day. This one is just cute. It's just a funny little story um, about a turkey that does not want to get eaten for Thanksgiving dinner and how he saves the barnyard and they don't eat him. It was funny. Then there is Happy Thanksgiving, Curious George. My kids love Curious George. And so this is a board book, once again. Good to have out for little ones. Um, let me see here. This one is funny. It's called An Outlaw Thanksgiving. Um, and it's got really pretty pictures all in it. Well, oh, goodness, let me get it open. Kind of about the Old West, Old Wild West. And it has been such a long time since I've read this book. I actually don't remember the whole premise of it. Um, but it's just traveling, you know, during the Old West, traveling by sleigh, horse drawn carriage, and train, stuff like that. And then one of my personal favorites, this book is hilarious. My kids love it. It was a hit in my classroom. It is a hit everywhere. It's so funny. It's called Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving, and it does follow a group of school children, so if you care about that, just know that's part of it. Um, but it's these school children that go on a field trip to a farm, and it follows the same rhyme and same syntax pattern as Twas the Night Before Christmas. So it says, Twas the day before Thanksgiving and all through the trees. The fall leaves were spinning aloft in the breeze. Eight children had boarded their school bus with grins and hopes that a field trip soon would begin. And it's just, they go to a turkey farm and it's hilarious what all ensues. And it follows that rhyme the entire way through. It's funny, our kids totally enjoy it. It's just a fun one. We read it the night before Thanksgiving and just really have fun with it. There is also one more that I don't have physically, so I will try to put a picture somewhere up here maybe, um, and that is Cranberry Thanksgiving. I have wanted to purchase this book. It is on the slightly pricier side, and my sister-in-law texted me and said, hey, I already have a copy of this, but I found it at a library sale and I couldn't just leave it behind, it was a dollar. Do you want a copy of Cranberry Thanksgiving? And I was like, oh my goodness, yes please. So I have a copy of that coming to me and I'm so excited. I did see that um, five in a row just released a mini unit with Cranberry Thanksgiving and so 
I am just ready to dig into that one. So there you have it. Now these are all of the books that I just had in my house that I have collected over the years. I honestly have not bought new fall books in probably a couple of years and so I'm always on the lookout and I can't wait to see the books that Christy brings up and um, to see which ones I would maybe want to get my hands on for us to just have in our home. Um, thank you once again Christy for collaborating with me and hopefully you'll have found some fun fall books. Um, if you guys would not mind subscribing, if you have not done so already, that really helps out channels like mine. And um, if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and that lets me know if you want to see more of this kind of content. Uh, if you have a book that you just love for Thanksgiving or for fall that we don't have here, let me know about it in the comments below. I love fall. It's my favorite. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. This time of the year is just so, so good for my heart and my soul. So please leave me down any comments below for the books that I should check out. All right, you guys, until next time.